All right, we're gonna try this one more time. Ow! So you remember how we had Bumblebee Ness in a uh, Smash Bros. Melee? Well, now we have Bumblebee Ike. I know that's right. It's so freaking cool. Who wouldn't want Ike dressing up like a Bumblebee? I know I would. So welcome to more of Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl with your host, Pitmarth Roy. In the last episode, we cleared a boss battle with the Pokemon Trainer. So, in this episode, we are moving on to using Ike. The hero of the Grand Mercenaries, who we do not like. Not even a little. Ike does not work like Marth. Not even... Well, I mean, they both use a sword. They're both from the same series. They both have counter. But the counter doesn't work the same way. They're definitely not the same weight class. Their powers aren't the same. Ready, go! Other than the fact they use a sword and they're from Fire Emblem, not too much in common here, whereas Marth was light, fast, and uh, had somewhat weak attacks, but it made up for it in the speed. Ike is has powerful attacks, but is incredibly slow, and is definitely a heavyweight character. In addition to this, there are a couple of things that make him, in my opinion, for at least for boss battles, worse than Marth, and I'll be explaining those shortly. And good, Rayquaza is down. Last time I had to fight him, fight him at number 9, and he was going really fast, which is not good for a heavyweight at all. But Ike's, Ike has also a couple other things going against him, and I said counter didn't work the same. It's still Ike's down B attack. The problem is, though, there's a little bit of delay with it, whereas Mars, if you countered, you know, mere milliseconds before the whatever attack landed at you, it would still counter. But Ike... That doesn't work. You have to actually plan this out in advance a little bit more, which is hard to do with a heavyweight because, especially for Ike, because his attacks say, take so long to execute that by the time you get out of him, you have to hit it immediately and you still might not make it in time. So you have to, you know, kind of get ready with the counter. In fact, I'm pretty sure at least some point in this uh, 10 boss gauntlet, you're probably going to hear the sound a little, but yet yeah, the counter will not have worked because it wasn't activated. You can see how Ike's like moving his sword. Until that you get that little flash, the counter's not active yet. Whereas with Marth, it was immediate. It's not immediate with Ike. And that throws me off because I'm used to using Marth. I've beaten boss battles on a test with Marth. I couldn't even tell you how many times. But with Ike, I've, I think I've only beaten it with Ike on intense one other time. And it wasn't like a practice before this anything. In fact, I died against Taboo on my practice run, so... And then, of course, I died a couple other times to a few bosses here and there. Oh, for crying out loud. Ike! Come on, you can do it, Ike! You can actually run! Oh, thank goodness, that would have likely killed me. Yeah, I'm hoping that attack does not manage to get me. There we go, get out of here. You slash at his feet. But yeah, Ike's counter doesn't work the same as Mars. In addition to this, since Ike's a slow character, uh, most of the heavyweight characters don't get a lot of height out of their jumps, and Ike is no exception to this rule. But instead of having a recovery to where I, uh, you kind of go up in the air, and then you kind of float back down, Ike goes up in the air, and very unceremoniously just drops onto the ground. So what does this cause? Well, primarily the thing it causes is less airtime, for lack of a better phrase. But from that lack of airtime, uh, what happens is basically if you want to dodge something, you really can't air uh, dodge it by jumping in the air if it's like a ground attack. It just doesn't have the same effectiveness as it would for other characters. Get over there, Ike. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Get over to the other side, Ike. There you go. I think that might be the first time I've ever successfully dodged that attack. Like, three times in a row. I almost always get hit by it whenever it happens. It's pretty much a guarantee I'll die. I think that's the first time I've dodged it with any character three times. 
So I'm glad that I finally managed to do that. I'm definitely using a hard container because I beat five of these guys, two of which were uh, Porky and Duwan, so Henry Quaze was in there too. Uh, granted, I fought him early, but still. So yeah, that's another disadvantage to using Ike. Uh, his ether recovery is definitely vertical rather than horizontal. There's a little bit of adjustment you can do to make it horizontal, but not very much. However, he does have a quick draw move, which is the side B right here. And you can use that for horizontal recovery if you need to. However, keep in mind that it's kind of similar to Luigi's Green Missile in the fact that you know he has a vertical and horizontal recovery in his B attacks. Unlike Luigi, though, where Luigi, if he hits something in midair with it, he could just use it again, or he could just use it again over and over. I cannot do this. So once you use it once, you're just going to keep falling, and you'll either make the recovery or you will not make the recovery. You don't get multiple attempts at it, so just keep that in mind. And for lack of a better phrase from Proton John's old Brawl videos, you can get intercepted with a corpse, or in this case, intercepted by a boss, and not make it because of that. So, the ultimate strategy is it would be better off not to get knocked off the stage in the first place. Another thing to keep in mind also, since Ike's jumps are so low, you're probably only going to get one aerial attack out of, you know, a double jump or a single jump, so just make note of it. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Couldn't get around it. That is something right there, though. If you use ether with a... and it goes at a certain timing and you get hit by something, the ether attack still activates and you don't take the stun from it. You take the damage, but not the stun and the knockback from it, so... Just something to keep in mind. Once again, obviously we better not to get hit by it at all, but hey, at least he didn't kill me, so. It's interesting to see Ike play like this, where in his Fire Emblem games, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, he was actually quite a fast character, and usually, for the most part, he would be one of the fastest characters you would ever get in both games, once you max out his speed. I mean, he was up there with most of the sword masters. Not quite as high, but he was still pretty close. And he had decent power to boot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're eight. Who is nine? Oh, it's Master Hand. Okay, I'm just going to use this now then. I'd be much more concerned about Galleon than Master Hand. Much more concerned. There's a gnat flying around my head, so if I'm, like, randomly taking in breaths of air, it's me trying to get rid of this stupid thing. That's the only. That's one of the big things I don't like about Summer. I don't really have any other problem with it, but the fact the gnats they drive me absolutely crazy. That likely would have killed the light right there. So there's an advantage to having Ike. There are other advantages, and I'll show one if I can make it to Master Hand without dying here. Ah, counter! Why will you not work? No. I knew you were going to throw that punch, and that's why I did not attack you, because if I had, he would have hit me with that punch, and I likely would have died. If I hadn't, I would have been very surprised. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'll take it now. I'm assuming Master Ham will not do that much damage to me. Hopefully he won't, but I would rather go into Taboo with, you know, damage than go not be able to go to Taboo at all, so. I'll try to play careful here. Ha ha! Outsmarted! Of course he still manages to hit me even though the attack was done. Oh darn it, I missed right there. Get me out of here. I did not ask you to counter. There we go. Jeez, I should not have taken that 26. The first two is because he was pretty much done with his attack, but apparently the game had not registered that or something. No heart containers, no the bosses. But anyway, Ike's advantages are his range. Like, this move right here has more range than you think it would. For both the hands, this move right here, uh, Ike's Eruption, 
actually has a bit of vertical range, and so you could hit the hands with that if they're busy doing something where you can't really attack them because, like, has no projectile. You just wait there, charging this up, and then once they're done, just smash it on them. Make sure that, um, you know that if it is fully charged, that it will do 10 damage to you. So, just fair warning. You may want to let go of it just a smidge early. Yeah. No, no, no! Oh, how did that not hit? Right, I gotta start playing a little bit more carefully now. Normally I would jump up and counter that, but I don't trust Ike's counter. Oh gosh, I was not expecting him to just jump straight to the next attack. Of course he went to the other side. Oh man, I am not in a good position right now. I do that all you want. Oh, I was going to mention why I died. Yeah, that move right there was what killed me last time, because whenever he did it, he did it on the left-hand side, and I was standing right next to him, so I had like literally no time to counter it at all. He's probably going to go for red rings in a second. Yep, there we go. I'm okay with him doing red rings. Oh, for crying out loud. But see, that's one of the things, and I'm going to pause while saying this, that's one of the things I don't like about Ike's right here, because he's so slow. You're noticing that I'm getting, like, the one arrow hidden, but it's, like, literally right before he teleports. And if that teleports an explosion, it's going to kill me. I'm going to stand as far away from this as I possibly can. Okay, great. Gotcha. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, thank you. I never noticed why this happened. If anybody knows why, but you get that, like, giant pink dot on his head whenever you kill him while he's giant like that. But thank you for not dying that time. Oh, my gosh, Ike. You're way too slow for boss battles. The next one, however, I'm incredibly concerned with because, as you can see, next time we'll be using Snake. I've never beaten boss battles on intense mode with Snake. Ever. I've done it with Ike. I have never done it with Snake. In fact, other than Rob, I think Rob and Olimar? I think Snake, Rob, and Olimar are the only three that I have not beaten boss battles on intense with ever. I've even beaten it with Ganondorf, but I have not beaten it with Snake. I have tried to beat it with Snake because I went across the line. And I got stuck on his for so long, I said, screw it, I'll move on. And then I kept going. And I think I might have stopped at Olimar's, but I know for a fact I've done it with Falcon and Lucas. I might not have done it with Jigglypuff, but I'm pretty sure I've done it with Jigglypuff. But Robin Olimar I couldn't do it with, and Snake I couldn't do it with. So I'm going to be really, really nervous about going in there with uh, using Snake. But uh, we'll see how that goes next time. Maybe I'll put him in the uh, Leopard outfit or something, I don't know. Either way, see you guys next time for more boss battles on Intense.